Hey everyone, my name is Dan and I care about documentation. Docs don't just have to be pages of markdown anymore. We can leverage ideas from educational technology to create experiences that help people learn better. As I've been working on open source docs, I've been thinking about ways to make docs easy to follow, interactive so you can try out what you're learning, and easier to maintain. So to celebrate open source and education and Vite, I want to show an idea I've been exploring to make good interactive docs easier to write. Lots of projects have been embedding interactive code samples into their tutorials. Svelte has this popular format where they pair a lesson on the left with an interactive code sample on the right. So you can read the lesson, try something out and see what happens. Solid has a similar approach with our tutorial made by Ryan, and Lit even takes this format a bit further by allowing you to go step by step through building a project. These are usually set up with a browser-based script that is built to run that specific framework. But this approach has some limitations. It doesn't really show a full setup for building an app. You'd need a package JSON and some config files. You might have to run some terminal commands. And that's just because of the browser's limitations. With a browser-based tutorial, you get rid of the friction of having to set everything up and all of the problems that can come along the way. But you also lose some realism and the ability to teach those pieces of the setup. So when I heard, first heard about the Web Container API, I got super excited. Um, this is what powers StackBlitz um, to run Node in the browser using WebAssembly. And if you can run Node in the browser, you can run Vite in the browser, and then you can run pretty much all the frameworks and meta frameworks using a full, realistic, extensible setup with a terminal and everything. Rich Harris and the team have used this to build a SvelteKit tutorial but I wanted to think a bit further. What if instead of every project coming up with their own solution to build these interactive tutorials, we could have a tool that lets you write and edit and share interactive tutorials on top of web containers? And that's the proof of concept I have here. So we start from an empty slate with one slide, and we'll get to that, um, but we can load our starter project from any project on GitHub and this will bring up all those files and start the web container. And I can go ahead and clear things out because let's say on this slide, I only want to show this, this one file. Um, I can write whatever I want here, like introduction to solid. This is markdown. Um, and then, you know, I can add another slide. Um, so on this one, we can choose to copy the state of the previous slide. So I'll do that. And maybe I'll say <laughs> the first step is to clear code you don't want, which always seems to happen when you start from a template. So I can go ahead and um, clear this and, and save the file. And now we have these two slides, each with a corresponding state. Um, so hopefully I can you can see where I'm going with this. Um, I can also go into preview mode where like I can't edit um, the markdown on the left. And if I do make changes to the code, it will disappear when I come out of preview mode. And um, I can sort of save this and share this link with someone else. I'll pull up one of these that I made before, and this will also show you a little bit of how this whole thing works. Um, one of the key pieces is Code Mirror. Um, we use Code Mirror on the left for each of these little editors. Um, we use Code Mirror in the center for the um, actual code you can edit. Um, and also, if you include code this way, like if I say, um, JS console.log hi. Uh, this will actually, if we go into preview mode, show us another code mirror instance embedded into the markdown. Sorry, just had to hop over to this side so you can actually see the text. Um, but yeah, this little tutorial shows you how to use code mirror in solid. Um, so you import the editor view, you can supply it a doc string. We're still not showing this thing yet. Um, but since Solid works with DOM nodes, you can just include view.dom, which is a literal DOM reference, and it'll just work. You can even return that directly from um, your function component. And this is why 
using solid with old school browser libraries like code mirror or something like green sock works really easily because solid deals with real dom nodes um, here when we go to installing a theme you'll see on this slide it switches to the package json file so we can sort of see what we're installing and by the way the full file system is always available here um, i just sort of crossed out the ones that we don't support showing like images um, so yeah, this walks us through step by step and you sort of get this aspect of kind of a coding walkthrough video where the creator is sort of like guiding you step by step in the process, but you don't have that maintenance cost of when you put out a video and your API changes and you want to change the video. Um, and a lot of people don't like watching videos and this is a great alternative that is more self paced but slides can be as big or small as you want, so it's a pretty flexible tool. Here, I've used it to make one of those traditional show solution tutorials. Um, I literally just grabbed an example from the React beta docs where it asks you to take this example and remove anything that doesn't have to be state. And as usual, you know, I can mess around with it and then I can press show solution. Um, and what I really like about this is it sort of shows really clearly what the difference between the two solutions are like We've just removed a bunch of code by refactoring and that was sort of the idea behind the challenge The way all of this code execution works is with the web container API This is not a normal API. So let's dive in. It's currently invite only but stack Blitz has been super generous So just reach out it's installed like a normal package, but if you try to use it out of the box, you'll run into an error telling you about a shared array buffer problem. Shared array buffer is a web API, which means it's baked into browsers. And let's break it down by going through each of the three words inside it. When you're programming and you want to access memory directly, you can do so by using a buffer. In JavaScript, this is called an array buffer, probably because JavaScript developers like arrays. And if you want multiple threads to access the same allocated memory, that's where shared array buffer comes in, where it'll give you that memory and let multiple workers or threads access it. This is really important for web containers because it's trying to re-implement low-level programs like Node, which were written in C, to run in the browser. Unfortunately, though, there turned out to be an exploit, which allowed attackers, say from other threads, to access memory from threads they don't own using shared array buffer. So to prevent this, browsers that support shared array buffer will turn it off unless you opt into a kind of protection called cross-origin isolation that makes sure you can only access threads you control. There's actually this panel in the dev tools to tell you whether you have shared array buffers available. So in this live version, I do, but in this errored out version, if we check, um, we are not cross-origin isolated, so we do not have shared array buffers. We can go ahead and enable the isolation mode by setting these headers, which V makes it easy to do for our dev server. Then we can go ahead and use the web container API, which is made up of a few functions. First, we want to boot the web container, which effectively grabs the rest of it from StackBlitz's server. Then we can call the load files function to load our file structure into the web containers virtual file system. Importantly, if you reload a directory using load files, it won't overwrite that directory. It will merge them. And so if you want to delete a file, um, you can't just reload its containing directory. You have to actually go and call the remove command, um, which takes a path name to remove. Then we can run our code using the container.run function. Um, and that will also take a callback so we can pipe the output of the command into say a terminal. And lastly, we can respond to events. And the most important event, and the only one I use, is server ready. And so what this does is whenever a port opens up, it calls this callback, passes us this URL, which is kind of like the URL that shows up inside of StackBlitz, and then we can do what we want with it. In our case, we use that URL to set our iframe in the top right corner.
I did want to show a little bit of the actual code so you can get a sense of how you can use all this web container stuff to get that functionality where as you switch from one slide to the next, it will update the web container according to what changed. And so the idea behind this is we always keep in memory whatever the last state of the web container was, and then we'll re-trigger this sort of diff function whenever the file system itself gets swapped out or whenever um, a file gets saved. Um, so then in this function, we check if the current files coming in have anything missing from what's saved, and if so, we need to go remove those. We also check, um, hey, did we change the contents of any of the given files? If so, we need to update those. And so we have a array of files to update, an array of files to remove. Um, so we have these helper functions that wrap those web container functions to go ahead and run that RM command for all the files we need to remove and go ahead to construct that directory object um, to load the appropriate files. And then if one of the files that changed happened to be the package.json, then we run npm install and npm run dev. And this is a wrapper function that goes ahead and constructs the right arguments to pass to that container.run command I showed you before. I've been calling this demo tutor with a U. Um, you can check out the full code at tutor.dev slash repo. Uh, <laughs> works. This is a GitHub glitch. I promise this is not my fault. I have no idea what's going on, but I'm keeping this in the recording. Um, anyway, I've been experimenting with all sorts of stuff for this, um, specifically code links that can let you sort of uh, link from the markdown to specific spots in the code, and that could be useful for code tours. And I've also been um, thinking about audio recordings. Um, but yeah, if you want to get involved, check out this repository. Um, who knows, it could stay as a demo or it could turn into something more. Regardless, thanks so much for watching and don't forget to check out VietConf. Um, so many of the technologies I've been using, they're all going to be represented at VietConf. So check it out.